All right, we're gonna hit record. Hey everybody, it is, what is it? March 29th, we're almost into April. Uh, we are here for Tech Tuesday, uh, this beautiful Tuesday here in Dallas. Um, and we are just gonna be here to answer some questions. We have a great topic to, to chat about today. Um, but if you have questions, certainly let us know either on topic or off topic. We can get to answering any of those, drop them in chat. Um, let us know how we can help you guys. Um, so ER and I were just chatting. You guys probably jumped in while we were kind of kicking this off together and thinking about what we were going to talk about in the, the topic of the week, um, which I was telling him is um, is a great topic, especially after a big uh, kind of a like a networking faux pas, we'll call it that, happened at yeah. a group that I was in yesterday. So you want to kick it off? You want to talk about the topic? Sure, happy to. So if you've been following us along for this week, and again, guys, I can't believe we're we're almost checking off Q1 of 2022, 25% of the way through the year. So uh, hopefully you're making a lot of forward progress. The topic for this week or the theme that uh, of this week has been financial freedom. And I, I think a lot of us who are either self-employed or own a business, um, really, that was the the one of the whys behind doing that. And uh, I was I was talking with Kathy earlier before we we uh, came on live, and one of the things that I've always heard as a term, and I'm a true believer in this so much so that I think the shuffle technology is really built to support this. And it's your your network is your net worth. Have you ever heard that your network is your net worth, right? And um, we want to talk about that power of networking, how to network correctly. And Kathy, I know you've got a story to share regarding that because maybe you're new to networking. Um, we want to talk about the technology and how that can facilitate and support networking, everything from you interacting and following up with people uh, to you getting referrals generated out of your network, which is this very powerful thing. Um, a few other things, and I, I love this. I love our Tuesday group. Why? Because I'm looking around and all I see are QR codes. And so, so awesome, guys. What this tells me is we are learning and we are applying what we've learned, right? I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. And uh, you may be in a room where you can't share your screen or you can't comment or chat, but we can always have our profiles up here, you know, with whatever we want to advertise, you know, go on ahead and click over there. Um, another thing on the networking, I know uh, last week it was pretty cool to do some quick networking as part of this, but my recommendation, let us know. We've got a small, great group here. We are all familiar with each other, but let us know where you're calling in from in the chat. Uh, go on ahead and post your uh, digital business card in there so we can all network and connect together. At a minimum, we should all have each other's cards in our card index and shuffle, okay? We should all have our cards in our card index of shuffle, and we should all be connected with one another on the platform. But let's talk about some tips and tricks, Kathy, of really how to network like a rock star. And I know you've been doing it for a long time, and you're you're a networking pro. So, waiting to get my tiara, my networking queen tiara. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you said. So, and I really was kind of preached and I was a little bit on my preachy box yesterday at my meeting about this is you're not trying to sell a room right when you walk in you're trying to connect with the people and get to know them and let them get to know who you are as a person and we do have people that walk in the room and think that they're there to sell and not only are you not there just to sell the people in the room right a you want to know who's in my phone right I have contacts in here that are going to be valuable to you if you let me get to know you as a person first but also the world of social media right you want me out there commenting on your post knowing that you're a good person that you're good at your job that you're going to follow up with the leads that I send you I need to kind of vet you out a little bit before you just walk in plop down your business card and go here's who I am you should do business with me right yeah. So building your network and building the trusted relationships in your network, way bigger than just going, hey, I mean, I've had people do that too. That wasn't yesterday, but they'll walk in to the meeting that I run and they'll just start putting business cards out in front of everybody's, you know, in front of everybody at the table. And I'm like, what are you doing? 
Like that's not, that's not relationship at all, right? No one's going to remember who you are. Why do you think I have a big old box of business cards that they don't mean anything to me? Because I don't know who you were. Kathy, that elicits so many thoughts and ideas in my mind, to be honest. And I want to talk about a few things, right? Um, the, the first thing is you're not there to sell everybody. You're there to make a connection. We want, we want to shift that mind frame. It's not a one and a done. And this is in sales and marketing in general. In most cases, it's not a one and a done. You don't say, here's what I have and you're going to buy from me. You have that whole no like trust relationship that Kathy, you were talking about. And that starts with meeting somebody, introducing yourself to somebody, letting them know who you are and what you do and what you stand for, you know, and learning about who they are and what their needs are, you know. And then additionally, from the, the, the networking side, Kathy, you mentioned this. And I think this is something that's a big aha. How many people were in your networking group meeting? I think we had almost 30 yesterday. Okay, so 30. Now think about this, Kathy, this is what you said. You don't want me, you want access to my Rolodex, mm -hmm. okay? If you open up your phone right now and you go to your contacts in your phone and you scroll all the way to the very bottom, there's a number of contacts that it'll show you. For me, 587 contacts sitting in my phone, okay? Think about this. I'm going to do a little bit of math here, guys. I'm a math guy. Okay. 30 people. We, we, we uh, look at this 1,636 contacts. Okay. We're just going to talk about the people on this call here, right? We've got 11 people on the call. A room full of 30 people. And let's say they all average 500 or more contacts in their phone. Would you rather have access to 30 people or 1,500? contacts. Now, granted, some of those contacts might not be the right fit and all that, but wow, what an audience to open yourself up to if you do the relationship side of it correctly. And I think that's the big win here is people are going in there. How many times do I hear, if I just had another prospect, if I just could get more inbound prospects, if I could just get a million leads. And here's why, because the average person, and I see this every day, the average person yeah, I see, Anna, you've got yours up. You know, the average person is sitting there going, I just want to get a sale and move on to the next, get a sale, move on to the next, get a sale, move on to the next. And that's sort of what their idea of sales and marketing is. And really, I'm a big believer if you had, you know, 30, 40, 60, 80, whatever it is on your customer side, and you just had awesome customer experience from the moment they met you till the moment they made that informed buying decision. And then after they bought from you, you continue to support them. They're your biggest source, your biggest brand champions. I know this for a fact because, guys, the amount of money we've spent, LFI, in total marketing. Do you know what it is? Anybody want to take a guess? This much. This much. Why? It's proof of it. Why? Could we, could we go out and market and scale faster? Yes. But here's the reality. We want to do it as a case study to go out and see how many of our customers will take us to the next tier of customers. How many of us love the product so much they're willing to share it or expose it to somebody else? And it's the same for your business. It's the same for your business. So you have to have that mind frame when you're going into networking. Kathy, I know you've got some thoughts on this. Well, yeah, and I mean, to me, it's like, that's the introduction card, right? Whenever we talk to people and they're like, why do I need 10 cards? All right, fine, make two cards. Mm -hmm. One about you that has very little to do about your business. Yeah. And one that is your business, right? Because that is, I think, the key when somebody I'm like, you know, meets me for the first time, kathyemma.com, or I send them the message or whatever. It's like, here's me. Here's, here's who I am. Here's the things I'm into. Here's what I do. Here's how I spend my day. Um, this is my heart project. These are my business projects. And, and now you can, you know, like we always talk about, pick the path. If you want to connect with me, here's some stuff we can talk about. What do we, you know, and what, what can I talk about with you? If you hand me, I hold one. I got one. I got a couple. You hear me? I don't know. What I can connect with you about financial planning. That's all I know to connect with you about, right? So right. it's like your your digital card can tell you a little part of it. I'm not saying write a you know seven paragraphs. Yeah. Tell a little interesting story, right? I like to go to the beach. 
I'll go to, I'll drive anywhere for a Bama concert and I will literally cross the globe for a Kenny Chesney, Chesney concert. You now know enough about me that you're going to be like, so where have you gone to a Kenny, Kenny Chesney concert? Yeah. Right? It's like a, a little snippet of a story that's going to make somebody remember you. 100%. Ruben. Yeah. Yes. Again, that's a great point, Kathy and ER. Uh, I lead a networking group, okay? And each and every week to be consistent, I post spotlight speakers that are going to be uh, scheduling. I, with Shuffle, I designed a, a form on the bottom, yeah. and they can check out exactly what particular day that works for them, okay? And I'm having to go out and maybe and call in a couple of people and asking them. But since I've done it consistently, I just got another one just a few minutes ago. And here's what she said. Thank you for reaching out. I've been thinking about this. Would prefer to do it sometime early summit. Are there any spots available then? You see, when they are ready, they'll come. But you have to have some kind of a vehicle. And that shuffle vehicle with the capture leader, you know, the basic page that you form yep. allows me to do that. And it saves me a lot of time. Yeah, I, I think love that idea, whole... Ruben. I'm actually going to steal, uh, I'm going to steal a version of that just by you saying that. I hadn't even thought about using it that way. We, you know, another networking group that I'm in that I don't run, we do have a chapter card that she puts up a QR code before each spotlight person. And it has the link to um, their, their uh, feedback. So she doesn't have to print out feedback forms anymore. So okay. it goes to a Google doc and you can give your feedback and then she sends all that feedback to the speaker. I love it. But I had not thought about using it for capturing speakers. I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, great idea. That's a great idea. Another application of the technology. And again, to, to create an efficiency for us. Uh, to, to leverage to, to help and support us. I know we're going to look a little bit into the meat of that, Kathy, scan a business card when we're out networking and we're meeting people. First, we, we need to know what the goal is, right? And it's to connect and meet and, and it's to get to know and it's to, uh, you know, start to form that initial relationship if you're meeting those people for the first time. It's not to sell them. You know? Well, not only that, but I think that a lot of times, and, and maybe you guys, um, you know, we all need to be a little bit more specific when we're talking to people about coming on to any of the weekly calls is like, we're not just talking about increasing your shuffle network, right? We're yeah. talking about any businesses that you're in. Yes. And to, you know, to Ruben's point, like this is something he uses for the, the, the networking group. I can use it for my networking group, use it for the company that you represent or whatever it is that you're building, you know, my nonprofit or whatever, um, you know, we're not just here to say like, here's how to build, you know, your shuffle network. Here's how to build any network. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, and then when, again, when you, when you become known as a connector and you become known as a network builder, I mean, I've had another company reach out to me and go, Hey, we already know that you do this you do it well in person, do you want to help us build this new Facebook community? I'm like, yeah, I can, you know, I'll give it a shot. I've never built a Facebook community. So, you know, you become the person that's known to know people, which is always nice. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And when I think when you're in that, you're in that power position, Kathy, to your point, people are going to start coming to you. Hey, do you know, because you're known as the person who knows people and that's going to be a steady stream. It's like what Mike Mike offered, you know, when people are coming up to your door and they're trying to sell you something or see you and you're already in the position to to field that relationship, to give them some information or to do something, you know, and and uh, to, to the other point, Mike, you made on, I think it was Friday with the founders, right? Imagine the funnel that Mike talked about if you were on that call and it's about putting people in and like what Ruben said, waiting till they sort of come out the bottom at whatever pace they come out at the bottom. If Mike had said, oh, I'm just going to scrap that whole thing and I just got to knock them off right at the top as they, you know, before they even go into it, it's it just not a, a feasible, viable, efficient and effective way to go about it. And yet this is what a majority of people are, are doing. So if we want to be different, we need to think about it a little bit differently and we need to leverage it in a way that can, can actually produce results. Uh, again, to what Kathy's saying, not just for our LFI networks, but for our business networks in general. 
Absolutely. I'm, I, I, now I'm picturing it. I'm wondering if Mike has a QR code like on his front door. So if you come to knock on his front door, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to capture you before you can even ring the doorbell. <laughs> <Right? like that. laughs> well, do we want to... For us women, you don't have QR pockets. Code. You yeah, could yeah, actually like... hang it around our neck. Yeah, right. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Ben had the QR code on my glass in my door, uh, but the information that they get when it scans is my contact information if something's wrong with my house. Yeah. So it. my neighbor, the fire department, any of them can scan that and call me. That's huge. That's huge. Wow, I never even thought about that either. There's another two. application, right? There's another thing. Yes, absolutely. And I've thought about that. Like when, like I always said, if my daughter, you know, when she was younger, I wish I'd had a card that I could send to like another mom. Hey, thanks for having Caitlin over. You know, she's allergic to nuts. Here's her doctor's numbers. Here's what she can't eat. If you need yep. anything, all of this stuff is a, you know, button push away. Yep. But I never thought about the house thing, like giving that to your neighbors or somebody to be able to go like, Hey, I appreciate you you know, watching out for the house. If you need anything, there's an easy way to get the information. Yeah. yeah that, um, Kathy, what you just said about the kids mm -hmm. and about, a, yeah, about th two or three years ago, it kind of led me into uh, building cards for young kids that are in sports. Yeah. So they are baseball, football, kickball, t-ball. I built a card for their kids and I got the parents. I think it's a fantastic idea. I always tell people, why do you have 10 cards? Do you have a kid that does, you know, mows the lawn or does babysitting? Make them a card. You know, you could, you know, you, I always have people reach out, hey, is Caitlin still house sit, pet sit? Yes, yeah, she sure does. Instead of sending her, you know, her makeup card, here's her house sitting card with all her testimonials on it. Right. Girl Scout cookies and candy bars for band. What, all you know, of the gift, the gifty things and the wrapping paper. There yeah. you go. You got them all set. Got them all. Absolutely. Look at all the ideas today. Love it. Love it. I love it. Ruben, well, did you have something else or is your hand just still up? I think his hand might still be up. Okay. I can put it down. I was just checking. Oh, I'm going to let him jump in if he had something. Um, so, Kathy, let's go through that process and that flow for everybody. I know that, uh, Anna, you had this question earlier in the week. You're out at an event. And somebody says, here's my card, you know, here you go. Here's my info type of thing. What, what do you do? What are those next steps? And Kathy, I don't know if you want to share screen and go through it. I can share my phone and go through it. Um, and if you guys think about this process, if you already have a giant stack, stack of these things, Just start this is something you want to be sitting down while you're watching the latest series or listening to something in the background and just starting to build your list, there's a tool that's inside Shuffle called OCR, Object Content Recognition. It's provided to us by Google. And what it does is when you take a photo of that business card, it looks at that image and it identifies the text off of that image and will suck it off the image and put it in and try to logically map it to the fields for the contacts that we have in the system. So Kathy, if you've got yours available, otherwise I can. I am, I was trying to pull up the demo account real quick. Oh, you're good, you're and good. I'm gonna log in. And what I, what I also like about that OCR side of things, if you're adding contacts, so think about the flow, add a new contact, then you're gonna get that contact form that comes up. But if you scroll a little bit, you'll see a take an image and that's the one you wanna be clicking. And then you'll be able to scan this. And what I like is it's gonna build out the contact profile for you and it will attach this image as part of the additional information for that contact profile. So here's Kathy's account. She's in her contact section. She's gonna hit the plus sign. You can see here's the form, but as she scrolls down it, Big button, scan a business card. And she can either select from a picture. So again, you could do this after an event. If you went to an event and you just took pictures and saved them to your phone, you could come back and pull them from your camera roll. That is why that is there. I'm a big proponent. Guy says the statistics on these business cards all the time. 90% are gonna get trashed. 
be a part of the solution, right? We wanna get digital cards in people's hands, take a photo of their card and hand it back. Say, don't waste it, here you go. Print less of these things. They're gonna get thrown away anyways. I've got your information, I will import it into my system. They might even say, well, wh what? Import it, you know? And you so it's not, it's not so the, other good, the other good time to do it via a picture is if um, there's not good Wi-Fi in the room. Yep. 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 So, okay, so keep going. So now I'm gonna go to take a photo. So we're gonna use Benjamin here, my guy that I met last week. And th this is probably a good example because there's a lot of information on Benjamin's card. So Kathy selects, use the photo, take an opportunity to crop that down if you'd like. Oh, you might be able to yeah, move it. There, there we go. go. And then you're gonna hit done. And the next thing it's gonna ask you after you hit that done feature is, would you like to scan that business card? Kathy, you can go on ahead and hit yes. And I wanna call out a few things. Again, this is Google's OCR. Go on ahead and scroll up, Kathy. And you can see it's brought in some information, but it's not always 100%. And what you'll see next to some of these fields is little arrows. So Kathy, if you click next to the arrow next to where it says Benjamin, it will identify the other text on the card that it may have thought was the first name. So if you click email, address, you can see Audible, Group, NYC, all of some of that data that it brought over. And you can just keep it as the Audible, you know? Um, again, you might wanna click in on the email field and just clear that out. But the whole goal of the object content recognition is to simplify the process of data entry. Here's a big friction point for most of us. We go out and we do a great job collecting cards from other people, but we fail to take any action off of those cards because it requires more data entry. Data entry to put in their phone number to call them, data entry to put in their email address to email them, data entry to put in all of their information into our CRM. So if Shuffle can simplify that process for you and make it easier for you to load in those contacts, you're more you're one step closer to being more likely to work those contacts. Now, Anna, you have a question. Go ahead. I do. Um, I just wanted to mention, if you're doing an event and you're doing this, taking pictures of cards, when you're doing this little editing process, put the date or a, an event code on there in front of their first name. So as you go through your contacts, you can pick those guys out in a hurry. Yep, yep. I think also, I don't know if it's on this one, but there might be a tag feature too, Anna, that you could be able to cool. tag them with that date or that event as well. And then you can see as Kathy goes to save this, it's giving her an extra option. Do you just want to save this to your shuffle contacts or do you actually want to push this into your phone? Kathy, I want you to take a few seconds, maybe a minute to speak why do we also want to push this into our phone? There's two big reasons for me. Because I started at first not doing that, thinking, oh, I'm going to save all this information. I don't, you know, I, need, I don't have to hold all this information in my phone memory. No, because that person's going to text you or call you and you're not going to know who they were because you didn't save them into your phone. Yes. So that's number one. Perfect, yeah. And number two, I am terrible about backing up my phone. So if my phone hits the lake, we're out fishing. I need these contacts to be in my phone and in my shuffle so that I can have them quickly available to me the next time I have to log in and need all these contacts. I think that's so spot on, Kathy. And this shuffle really is backing up your whole network, right? Storing it in the cloud and keeping it. But Kathy, to your point, how many of us have gotten that call or that text message? And nowadays, like if it's unknown caller or some random number, I don't even answer, yeah. right? It just goes straight to voicemail. But if I know that I just met Benjamin at an event, we still haven't had a lot of dialogue. We haven't had a lot of uh, interaction. If he's calling me, I want to be able to pull that up and answer the phone and say, hey, Benjamin, what's going on? You know what I mean? And then now I'm greeting him as if we're already ready to do business together, as opposed to like, hello, who is this type of thing or not even answering it to begin with. So don't hesitate to add that into your phone as well. What you see is after Kathy's done that, she's added it to her phone. She brings it up. This is Benjamin's profile. She has direct look at that card that she scanned, right? So she already knows what his card looks and feels like. And then she's got the whole profile for him already started. The tags, Anna, that's what we were talking about. If you're doing this and loading it in, 
You can throw the tag date there. Now, one thing, Kathy, go on ahead and click on the activity. Look at this. It's already going to log that for you, Anna. So you don't need to tag the date. Kathy just created Benjamin two minutes ago. When that goes to tomorrow, it will say the date. Okay. So it's already going to be logging some of this stuff for you. It's also logging that you have a photo of their business card and whatnot. So really the only benefit, um, I think, yeah, would be nice. to use tags for things like the event, networking event, ABC, trade show, XYZ, et cetera. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I just want to be efficient. If we're trying to, if you got a stack of a hundred of these, save your time of adding the date because it's going to auto add it for you as a little uh, uh, tip. But here's our, here's our profile now. We've got our, our simplified CRM within Shuffle. We're going to answer these five questions, guys, when it comes to networking. I think this is the most powerful thing that you should mark off the list. Who is this person, right? We know it's Benjamin. We have a photo of his card. And as we interact with him, we're going to take more notes and gather more information. But that's the who. Who are they? How do we know them, right? Going back to Anna's tag it, I met him at this event or somebody referred me to him or well, we met at the shopping, you know, in the grocery store line, whatever it is, you want to be like, how do I know them? The next one is when did we interact? And again, some of that activity is going to log that. Like I went to this event and I met him, but then you want to be like, oh yeah, we've called, we've texted, we've emailed, we've IM'd each other. Those are all interaction points. And the key here is five to 12 interactions is our goal, guys. We don't want to be the laggards like a majority of people out there who are doing two or less or zero. If it's a 50-50 shot, you know, and it's me and Benjamin, there's a good chance he's going to be the zero follow-up guy. And I'm going to be in the 20%. I'm going to continue to follow up because I don't want that relationship to go by the wayside. So who are they? How do I know them? When have we interacted? What did we interact about? Kathy, you just went to it. The notes section is what did we interact about? And there are a few tips on this note section that I want to tell you guys. Okay. The first tip is giving it a subject and you can continue to add and edit notes. That's one thing. Or you can add multiple notes. So depending on your style, like Anna, you can put a date for every interaction and create a separate note for every interaction. The other thing I want you to, to, to see Kathy's typing in a note. Okay, Kathy, I'm going to challenge you right now. Go on ahead and hit return when you're done with that sentence. Go into your notes section. And at least on iPhone, and I know this is available on Android as well, right at the bottom of Kathy's phone is a little microphone. Do you see it down in the bottom right-hand corner? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Kathy clicks on that, she can literally dictate into her phone the conversation. Again, we're looking for efficiencies in our business. So it's your choice. You might have to go back. My text, my, my voice to text sometimes is not that great. And I'll have to go back and edit. But if it helps me log a lot of information quickly, that's what it's all about. Again, making that note get captured fast. You can see Kathy's just sort of talking into her phone, send Benjamin an email about little souls, etc. And that's her Thing. And then she might have to come in and just revise it a little bit. But again, we're looking for efficiencies to help us log information, who they are, how we know them, when have we interacted, what did we interact about. Information is power. When you go to have that next interaction, you're going to be able to look at and review all of those notes. Does Benjamin have kids? You're going to log a note on that. You know, uh, what, what interest does he have? You know, all of those things are, again, building that know, like, and trust relationship with your contact, with your new, rela with your new uh, relationship here. The other thing, I wanna go into the notes section, Kathy, and if you can take a piece of paper and just scribble the word note on it, this is something I learned from Kathy. From a guy who built the system, I actually learned this from Kathy. And she's like, why aren't you just doing this? Because I will tell you what, guys, I am still one of these people, right? I. I learn better by writing it down. I don't always flip back through and look at it, but you can see, you can click on the new photo and you can actually add an image to your notes. So if you're one of those people who still writes things down, you can log that. Again, we don't want it to be out of sight, out of mind. You want it to be, hey, when I go to look at all things Benjamin here, I'm gonna see 
this note and this note and this image and this note, and I can get a quick recap of all of my interactions with him. Think about that going into the next conversation versus picking up something like this. It, uh, is it three of these ago? Is it two notebooks ago? When did I have that conversation? You just go into your shuffle, pull up the contact, go to the notes section, and there are all of the notes. So Ruben, I saw your hand go up. Yes, yeah, so here's right in, right in that uh, realm right there that you just hit at a networking function. It really is fun because if you just meet someone and you have that interaction, you take a selfie, you and that person, and then put it right in that right in that space there. And then you can follow up with them. And I usually do is I follow them up with the send out cards for that same photo. So I'm, do, I'm doing two things at one time. But taking a selfie with the person that you're meeting and putting it in there, it's it's really impactful. I love that, Ruben. And again, next time you go to interact, I meet a lot of people. You know what I mean? Maybe I met 10 people at this event with 30 people, and I am not a name to face person. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me type of thing, but uh, it's great to have an image so that the next time I go to have an interaction, oh, I recognize that person. I know who to walk up to. I'm not walking in, looking around. I've got it all saved in here. So you can see Kathy hit edit the contact. There's a little plus next to the icon. That's a perfect place as well, Ruben, for you to add that little selfie or that little snapshot. And again, even if you're taking the selfie and then you go to add it and you just crop out their image and put it right in, you're starting to create an entire profile or dossier on every relationship that you have. And think about this, what happens to that over time, right? It starts out by the introduction, you add a little information, you have some interactions, you're taking notes, and as you have more and more interactions, that profile on that contact is just building up bigger and bigger. How about we even add to it from the object content reader? If someone doesn't have a business card, but they hand you a post-it note with their name, email, phone number, sort of something a little bit like that. You take oh, a on. picture. I can let you share. Hold on. Okay. Stop. Okay. Stop. Don't just explain it. You got to show uh, it, buddy. Okay. So they hand you a note. I just wrote one down real fast. Just made a name up, right? Yep. The object content reader, scan, take a picture. Okay, it took the it. picture okay. and it loaded it up all just through the handwriting. Yep. Again, this is not, when you look at the cards, fonts are going to be different. Text is going to be different. All of these things. And to Guy's point, this is Google technology, right? So it's going to read even handwriting to some degree. Now, not everybody's chicken scratch. It's going to pull up off the uh, off the, the paper. But if it's legible in any way, it can suck that right off of it into that profile. And you can edit it. Yes. Yes. So, um, Kathy, let's jump back to your phone screen because we've now met somebody. We've now scanned their business card and started to create a contact profile. I mentioned there were five things and we talked about four of them, right? Who are they? How do I know them? When have we interacted? What did we interact about? What's the last one? Anybody? When are we going to the next appointment? Again? Yeah. When are we going to interact again? When are we going to interact again? And guys, this is, we talked about that follow-up thing. This is the biggest goal that I can impart upon everybody. You want to create what we call the contact follow-up loop. Every time you have an interaction with somebody, this is the rule you need to remember in your head. I'm going to end every single interaction with the expectation of when the next interaction is going to be. Hey, Kathy, it was so good talking to you. I can't wait. We'll recap again tomorrow. Hey, Ruben, I know now's not right the right time. You're pretty busy. You got a lot going on. Do you care if I follow up with you in three months? It doesn't matter when you set that for. You're the setting that you. expectation. Then you jump into your reminders and you add that reminder, whether it's an advanced date or a time, right? Slide in and, okay, six months from now, I'm going to follow up with them. And then just done and save it. Or if you're doing the standard stuff three days from now, four days from now, five days from now, really quick, three weeks a week, and add it in. The whole goal 
is you do not want your new contact or your existing relationships to fall through the gaps. And that's what happens to everybody. Everybody, because they don't have a loop that keeps that always in motion. Even if it's a six month big circle or a one day 24 hour circle, you wanna set the next interaction and you wanna set the reminder. And then here's what that loop looks like, right? You add a contact, you add a note, you add a tag, you add that info, okay? You set the follow-up and the expectation. Then you leave that relationship alone and you go about doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And then your phone goes off and it says, hey, ER, it's time to follow up with Anna. And I go, oh, good thing I got a reminder on that. I wasn't even thinking about it. I've just been doing my work. You hit it, it brings you to the profile. You know, Benjamin, it's time to follow up with Benjamin. You click on the Benjamin profile. You do a quick review of the notes and the tags and that type of stuff. It's literally a five second review. Do I need to catch up on anything and refresh my memory? Then you have the interaction. And when I say interaction, that's what I mean. It could be a phone call. It could be a text message. It could be an email. It could be an instant message out to them. It could be a coffee shop meeting. It could be a, a work meeting. These are all interaction points, but you set that expectation. And then you have that interaction. And guess what? After the interaction, what do you do? You log the notes. You set the follow-up reminder in the intention for the next interaction. And then you set it to the side and wait for it to go off again. When you get into that habit loop, You'll have a circular follow-up with every one of your contacts and nobody's ever going to fall through the gaps. And then that's what it's all about. When we talk about your network being your net worth, it's about working those relationships. Even if it's just a friend or a family member, because guess what? They know your customers as well. When you're talking to them, following up, and you're just chit-chatting and they're asking how things are going and you're talking about wow, this new thing that you've just been playing around with called tap or this other thing that you're doing in your new business or whatnot, they're going to hear that. Not that you're selling them, but that they're then like, oh, you know what? I know somebody who was mentioning that. I should connect you guys. That's why this stuff is so important and having a tool that supports you in doing it is vital. Uh, Kathy, I, I don't know if I can, uh, I want to share this because Here's what I typically see. Guy, you and I are on calls a lot. I see one of two things. I see somebody who has the Excel spreadsheet of all of their contacts, right? Names, phone numbers, email addresses. Maybe this is you, right? A big list of everybody. There's always a row that says notes that starts to get bloated and really big. There's always some contacts that are highlighted in that Excel spreadsheet and some of them that are blacked out. Those are the people who never want to talk to you again. You know what I mean? And then you're always left to go to that spreadsheet and pull that information, scroll through. Who do I need? To, how much work is that on you? Shuffle's going to take out all of that brain damage and it's just going to send you follow up reminders. And if you've been doing your job right, you've been putting in and building out the whole profile and all of those contacts. So you get the follow up, whoop, you, you take action on the follow up, you know, or reschedule it, but don't erase it or don't, you know, just end it take the action and the step and do the follow-up and then go through it. Here's the other thing I see. And then uh, Anna, will will get to you. That this is all it is, right? The notebook. Every meeting of every day of every person I've ever met with, this is my life in one little book. And if you're not syncing it up and backing it up in shuffle, what happens when you leave this thing behind? When it gets stolen out of your car along with that stuff that they thought was valuable, but isn't valuable to them, but only to you? I mean, then you're in utter chaos. Oh no, I just lost everything. Guys, this is why Kathy was saying, I put them in my phone, I put them in shuffle, they're saved. That way, if I lose anything, I've got it right where I need it. So Anna, over to you. Hey, I learned something new. I, cause I was trying to think, you know, how do I put tap on my, on my cards and, you know, without making this whole thing too busy. Yep. Well, I found out that I had, there's such a thing as a subdomain. Mm -hmm. Notice that my AnnaMBrooks.com takes you to my LFI card. Mm -hmm. Now I have a subdomain that says taps slash AnnaMBrooks.com. Yep. And it takes them right to my affiliate spot and tap. I love it. I love so, it. <laughs> but I, well, that was easy. I didn't have to add anything to the card. So if you want to learn about the tap card, then you just go to tap dash or slash Anna and Yeah, I love it. I was going to talk about the other thing that we talked about 
which was um, how to find, uh, how to sort your contacts or find your contacts, right? We talk about that too, because a lot of people um, will make a, a reminder and they'll go and they'll do the reminder call, but they forget to either delete it or put a note on it or whatever. And yeah. then all of a sudden you're getting exactly. all these reminders, right? It, mine is noon every day. Bing, you have <laughs> 75,000 reminders you haven't followed up on. I'm like, yes, I have. I just have a note, you know, taken off the reminder. Exactly. So um, it, to do that, one of the nice things, and this goes back again to your whole if you lose your notebook or your notebooks at home, this is when I had my epiphany when I first learned about Shuffle and I had been in a direct sales company years ago because for me, it was always the carpool line. Every single day I sat there, I was like, I just waste so much time sitting here for 45 minutes in carpool that I could be doing something if I would have just grabbed my notebook or grabbed my follow-up sheets or whatever if I had those with me. Right. So now, even if it's not like, oh, I have a reminder popping up on my phone, you can go to your contacts, click that little gear, sort by your upcoming follow ups, and it's going to tell you. So maybe it's not due till tomorrow. Right. But you could be like, okay, I know who I'm going to call, or maybe it's past due and it's red on here. And you're like, oops, didn't get to that one. And you can go ahead and do that. Did I just lose my screen? Uh oh. 